Hello everyone. Today we are diving into a topic which is of utmost important in today's world, especially for the women or for the young girls who are at the reproductive age. Yes, we are talking about PCOS or PCOD, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovary disease. PCOS is a hormone imbalance that can lead to a variety of symptoms. Treat it as your hormones being out of sync, which can affect your ovaries, which are producing eggs. PCOS is an endocrine disorder, which might disrupt or produce excess androgens to become cyst further on. But on the other hand, PCOD is just a hormonal imbalance that can cause ovaries to release immature eggs, which can lead to swollen endometrial lining or hormonal imbalances. PCOS is always more severe than PCOD and is linked to long-term health issues like type 2 diabetes, uh, heart diseases or infertility. How do we know that we are suffering from PCOS? There are very common symptoms that you might want to watch out for. The first one is pigmented skin, darkening of neck or body. Secondly, there might be issues with infertility. Thirdly, you might be a little insulin resistant. That means no matter what you eat, you might gain weight very easily and find it difficult to lose it as well. There might be other symptoms also like receding hairline. The most common symptom is having irregular, heavy or scanty periods. So if you have any of these symptoms, you might want to take a consultation with the proper doctor to diagnose this. PCOD also has a a very strong genetic component which means that it might be running in the families and is carried on to you by them so your uh, mothers might be uh, suffering from it or your grandmother must be suffering from it but it went undiagnosed in today's generation we are finding more of these uh, PCOD conditions because of the adulterated food our lifestyle and bad food practices there are a few tests which all the healthcare practitioners recommend you to do it when you have these symptoms amongst which USG of the whole abdomen or pelvic region is the most common one to rule out the size of the ovaries if there are any cyst or fibroids present in it or the thickness of the endometrial lining few of the blood tests which they recommend is LH which is luteinizing hormone FSH which is the follicle stimulating hormone and the TSH which is related to your thyroid condition since all of these are related to disruptive hormones Thirdly, we might also get you ruled out of insulin resistance, so it's better to get your blood sugar levels done. The fourth one is the lipid profile, because all of these conditions are related to excessive fat in your body or obesity, we definitely want to rule out if your cholesterol reports are clear or not, because these hormonal issues might also be linked to further heart diseases. And the fifth one is the prolactin. The raised prolactin is a very common symptom of PCOS and should be ruled out. The best way to manage PCOS is to have a three-tier approach, which is the first one is dietary management, lifestyle management, and the third one is your overall physical and mental well-being. So dietary management includes elimination of certain foods which can further disrupt your hormones, amongst which your dairy intake is the first one. So I normally recommend people to go low on dairy, maybe not completely go vegan, but reduce their intake of paneer, chena, excessive of curd, or any milk product which you are consuming in excess. The second one is to have unprocessed food. So anything which comes straight out of the dabba or which you can have it uh, after cooking after two minutes are processed foods for me. Something like a ready-made beverage or a bread, biscuits, they are highly processed which does not have anything beyond maida, sugar or uh, stimulators or uh, excessive uh, processed uh, sugars in them. Those should be absolutely avoided. And the third one is hydration. The first and foremost way to take out toxins from your body and to include more blood circulation in your system is by drinking more water. So while over PCOS is always linked to being overweight, we should make sure that you are hydrated very well. And also I forgot to mention sugar. We all know sugar is the biggest enemy we have. But why so more in PCOS is because we are already dealing with insulin resistance. So a normal person can tolerate sugar, maybe a sugar spike is not as much 
as in a PCOS patient. So we should go very low on uh, processed foods like maida and sugars and different forms of sugars. It could be jaggery, it could be honey because these are all high in glycemic index. The best way to lower down your uh, sugar intake is by taking more vegetables while you're also taking your carbs along with it. So the sugar spike is normally lesser than the other places. Since we are already dealing with insulin resistance, our first and foremost approach to any dietary change would be to keep our meals which has very low glycemic index. The best way to take care of that is uh, having whole food grains. So having like a oatmeal or a roti over breads is always a wiser choice. Including vegetables, lean proteins and good fatty acids is also very important. So normally it's a, since our metabolism is already on a lower side and we are trying to lose fat, lose weight while being on a PCOS uh, diet, we always have to increase our protein content fat content and go low on carbs. So the best way to reduce your carb intake is to substitute your carbs with your good fatty acids through nuts and seeds. So include good fatty acids through nuts, maybe walnuts, almonds, raisins and lots of seeds like flax seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds as well as sesame seeds. All of these are loaded with minerals which are required while you are suffering from PCOS. Things like magnesium, iron, sesame seeds gives you a lot of calcium. All of these are extremely important while managing this condition. Also, it keeps you satisfied for a longer time. Since you are going low on carb, you need to keep yourself full so that your energy level does not drop. There is a lot of inflammation when you have PCOS, so we need to take a lot of antioxidants through berries or citrus fruits, uh, which will heal your ovaries further. Also, we should include a lot of leafy vegetables because of the anti-inflammatory properties in it. There are certain lifestyle changes also which needs to be done, which includes not eating out too often. Any restaurants you go to, they only care about how tasty the food ends up. But we need to take care of our nutrition more than anything else. So we should go low on seed oils, which is mostly served in the restaurant outside. So focus on eating home cooked food. Secondly, take care of your sleep patterns. So sleeping at least six to seven hours minimum every single day. And uh, at the same time, getting up at the same time and sleeping at the same time also improves your hormones. And uh, definitely go low on consumption of alcohol and smoking as these brings on more anxiety and ruin your uh, periods more. In addition to uh, these uh, dietary changes, I would advise everyone to keep their stress levels at the minimum. There is something called cortisol hormone which rises and it's a very typical and common symptom of PCOS. So we should make sure that you know we are happy always, do things which can keep you happy, take care of your uh, mental health by doing meditation every day, maybe in the morning or before going to sleep so that you sleep better. Your anxiety levels have to be managed very well when treating or taking care of these symptoms. To get the best results is to do a combination of strength training as well as cardio. So my advice would be three days of strength training or core muscle exercises and three days of cardio exercises. So something like a yoga with swimming is a very good combination or strength training with uh, cardio exercises is a very good combination or maybe Pilates keep you relaxed and work on your core muscle exercises. Yoga is also beneficial because yoga is the only way to massage your internal organs. So when we are dealing with cyst or fibroids it is important that we have a lot of blood circulations around your pelvic area. So it's advisable that you do some kind of asanas or yoga to heal out of it. So I think it's a wrap on today's video. Remember smaller changes can make big difference in your life and your overall symptoms and well-being. Stay healthy and stay tuned for more nutrition videos.